the BHP podcast. Let's talk about this. What are you preaching right now on the road? What's your, uh, what's your subject matter? Uh, the Lord gave me a new message recently on um, the thorn taker. Mm. You know, the end of it is uh, basically if you were to have somebody pull a splinter out, yeah. you want somebody who knows how painful it is. And if ideally they could say, I just went through this the other day and I, I can sympathize where you are. Mm. And so Jesus wore a crown of thorns, not, not to be dramatic. Every place the blood was spilled was sig- significant of a place of healing for us. So he, he's under such stress and anxiety, whatever word you want to call it, until the capillaries in his sweat glands burst. And I heard a preacher say recently, and I don't remember who it was. I would definitely give him credit if I remembered. But they said the blood was wanting to get to us so bad, it couldn't even wait for the whipping post in a prayer meeting. It starts pushing its way out of the sweat gland. <laughs> so, you know, the blood for, for when we're alone, the blood for when we're under the pressure of anxiety, the anticipation of something that's going to happen. That's what was happening to Jesus. And then... Um, you know, the, his, his back is beaten by his stripes were healed. Uh, his beard is plucked. There's, there's sick, uh, significance to all of that. But the crown of thorns is, is significant that everywhere a thorn pierced his, his, his skull, his scalp, his, his head, that blood came out for the things that pierce our mind. So that's the end of the message. But the beginning is, um, is just the fact that that uh, Jesus said in the parable of the sower that uh, that certain seed of the word of God fell on soil. And it didn't say there were thorns there. It said that thorns sprung up with it. And it wasn't sin. It was the cares of life, the deceitfulness of riches, the pursuit of pleasure. Um, and because these things were allowed to grow up, they choked out the seed of the word of God. Mm. And so actually tied some green cloth together and knotted it up to simulate like this, this thorn vine and uh, kind of tuck it in my shoe and talk about the power of the enemy has been pushed down from, from the garden. Uh, the snake, whatever legs it had, maybe it was had kangaroo legs and could jump. Maybe it had cheetah legs and could run. Mm-hmm. Maybe it had giraffe legs and it, and it could, you know, it was tall, but now it's been pushed down and the power of the enemy does not have the striking capacity that it had. And that was a powerful revelation to me. Just how many times have we read Genesis and the Lord to show you right there? I push the power of evil down so it could be under your feet. Mm. But if you let it creep up on you, it will coil. It will rise. And so that thorn, you know, I just begin to wrap the fabric around my leg, around my torso and talk about anxiety is this um, anticipation of evil, the anticipation of an evil outcome of danger and if you, if you could imagine being surrounded by thorns, um, Isaiah said that uh, the house of joy would be overgrown with, with thorns. And it's speaking prophetically of when the children of Israel were taken into Babylon. And it said the city of joy would be overgrown with thorns. And so you don't want to move because any direction you go, a thorn is going to pierce you. Mm-hmm. And and you see that, you see that the people came back after quarantine and they were willing to come back to church by and large are willing to take off masks. They're willing to lift hands, but so much more of what we believe in the spontaneity of being led by the spirit and the liberty of the spirit has been gone. It's, it's people aren't moving out. It's, it's a greater struggle for people to come to the altar, for people to pray with one another, for people to be led by the spirit. And so it's like there's a thorn vine that's just wrapped around us. And if I, what will people think if I do this? Am I out of order if I do this? And it's not just in church services. It's all of life that fear and anxiety, self-harm has increased since COVID. Uh, Suicide, not just amongst teenagers, amongst all age brackets has increased. Um, The Miami County Sheriff's Department said what was prior uh, domestic violence calls for one month, they were now getting every weekend. So it's just all these areas of turmoil. And uh, had Jesus not worn a crown of thorns, we wouldn't have a remedy. But since he did, he's the thorn taker. Since he has experienced it, he can sympathize. And uh, that's the power of the gospel, not just therapy, not just a sedative, 
Um, there's place for all of, all of the things that we, we may need at different seasons of our life, but the power of the gospel to let Christ come and say, I see where that hurts you, but it's not going to keep you immobile. It's not going to paralyze you in fear. And if we ultimately believe that everything that comes to our life is through the providence of the hand of God, then anticipating evil while believing everything that comes to me comes by the will of God, or at least allowed by God, means that I believe that God is evil. And it's, I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm not one of those people that likes to start a service by saying God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. It sounds like a cliche. It sounds like, it sounds like Pentecostal liturgy, like we're not going to read the Apostles' Creed. We're just going to shout God is good. But at the, <laughs> at the end of the day, we do have to reaffirm, no matter what's happening in my life, the character of God is good. Yeah, And uh, the Lord scolded me in prayer a while back and said, you're afraid of this and you're afraid of that and you're afraid of that. Why do you call me evil? Mm. I said, Lord, I, you know it's God when he's telling you something you haven't. It's maybe in your subconscious, but you would not consciously think. I was like, Lord, I would never call you evil. He said, when you anticipate evil and then speak that everything that comes to you comes from me, then you're living in fear is tantamount to calling God evil in his character. And so while I was kind of repenting for that, I was like, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to believe you for good. And he kind of like flew on top of that because there was a season of my ministry where I'd feel like I'd get really anointed and say, God's not some cosmic Santa Claus in the sky where you just ask for blessings and he throws out presents. And I was, I was praying and repenting for thinking, you know, God, I'm sorry for living in fear. I'm sorry for calling you evil. And he's like, and stop saying that. I'm like, what? But you're not. He's like, no, I'm not. I'm better than Santa Claus. He comes once a year and and he only blesses children or whatever, but I'm real. And if you knew how good I was, you would wake up every day like Christmas morning, not anticipating evil, but anticipating good. Mm -hmm. Even when you suffer, that you could give glory to God. And uh, so that's a message that's pretty fresh on my heart right now. That's awesome. And you're preaching that like everywhere? Lift your hands right now. I made people have some altar call music. (laughs) Um, I've ministered that message maybe three or four places, and um, I feel like it's really helped people. 